Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'll be reacting to Bhagavad Gita. Can selfless actions lead to God? Hindu Academy. So I figured, I mean, I just was going down Hindu Academy because it's their turn. <laughs> I try to go through all the people that I watch. And I just end up seeing this one first, then I saw the which path should I follow, which should have happened yesterday. So I hope to find the other ones. And I want to hear what Lakhani has to say about the different paths. And then we will also finish up with Sar Swavi Sarvapriyananda with, I think it's Raja Yoga is the one I didn't do yet on that one. Because it's like a two-parter and they're like, it's three or four hours long. <laughs> I'm dreading that one to a degree, but also I'm looking forward to it. Anyways, let's go and get started. And this is the path of karma. The word karma means action. We all know that. The path of action is something the second most popular second. path, if I can use the word, for the Hindus. This path is very different, very unusual. Because the path of karma says, remember I told you Hinduism comes into two flavors. Either personality oriented, gods and goddesses, or principle oriented. Now the path of karma perhaps is more suited to people who like to think of religion in a, in a principle oriented manner. What is this principle oriented manner? I was going to say, I, I think I fall into that one principle maybe. What I'm just curious as to what's the definition of principle for me to know for sure. <clears throat> he says, don't think about God like a personality in sitting in the heaven and dictating the terms. God is not sitting there, he's sitting here. What you see in front of your eyes, the living things, especially human beings, are the most transparent manifestation of what you are searching for in the heaven here and now, not in the hereafter. I think that's it, so far. <laughs> Here is your living God, shining out to the eyes of every living thing you come across, becoming most transparently visible as human beings. It's your God here. See, this is called principle-oriented Hinduism, not focusing on Vishnu or Shiva or Mother Goddess anymore. Focusing on humanity. He's saying, look, this is Swami Vivekananda, purest of purest Vivekananda, says, see and serve God in humanity. And the wonderful things that come out of Vivekananda, this is the modern giant. You've not seen such a giant in the history of Hinduism, I'm telling you. He says, they alone live who live for others. The rest are more dead than alive. What a dramatic statement. This is the principle-oriented Hinduism. It doesn't seek a God in the heaven. He sees God in humanity, in living things, in the here and here and now. Yeah, actually that. Uh, and this has kind of been what I kind of follow in a sense. Like I want, I've said this before. I think on this channel, but when I was working in the medical field, that's a I do patient transportation, and when I move patient around, sometimes I I hear people saying, "Oh, thank God for this. Thank God that I'm okay. Thank God for that." I'm like, thank the doctor at least, because without him, this would have never happened, you know. So I guess this is where I see maybe God. Not in its truest sense, but in humanity. As in, I believe in humanity. <laughs> it's really weird to say that, I guess. But I, I have said that before a long time ago. I don't know if I've ever said it in this channel, but I, I believe in humanity. I want humanity to do better. I want humanity to do good. You know, no matter how awful things get or whatever it may be, I know when push come to shove as they say humanity tends to pull together but it only lasts for so long um in america 9 11 was that situation when crap hits the fan freaking everyone united in a sense actually uh, what from what i've been hearing in a sense it has been um so but yeah, uh, that's my belief. My belief is in humanity, not some su superior being out there, not some higher power. Now, obviously, there is probably superior beings out there, but not in the sense of gods, but like in aliens. <laughs> but anyway, so let's continue on. The karma mark is more suited for these kind of people. The reason is this. What is karma mark? Again, you see, again, Bhagavad Gita is a very comp you know, comprehensive text of Hinduism. You find this marvelous teaching. First, says Krishna, be active. Don't be passive. Again, you see, human nature is natural from the material kingdom. We like to be full of inertia, full of laziness, full of tamas, like to just kind of you know, take it, things easy. So the first thing that you require in Karumag is be active. Don't sit back. 
Stand up and do something. Even if it's wrong, but do something. Be active is the first part of the equation. Be active. Now you say, Dilipai, we are all active. We are all kind of busy with our businesses, our university, whatever. The second part of the equation is the tricky one. Hmm. It says act, but act selflessly. This is not easy. Because right from the time we are born, we are looking after our own self-interest. What else can we do? The food that we comes to our mouth. We need all these faculties to look after this body and perhaps this family. So the action is natural, but the action is always, if you like, ego-centered, me-centered. So the second part of the equation is tricky. It is asking you to change your emphasis. Don't live for yourself. Don't kind of have a life which is kind of centered around yourself or your little family, me, my wife, my virtue, and my Disney World trip. Okay, so here's this reason why I, in the last video I said I don't think I follow any of these paths necessarily to the T. Um, and this is where I tend to agree with Osho. Um, again, I wish I could react to his videos. It just utterly gets blocked all the time. So it's not like they even claim the video and they get all the revenue. It's just they block it. <laughs> so uh, anyways. Um, so what Osho says is that you're only responsible for yourself. I do believe in that, even with uh, what he's saying. But I, 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 I agree with both. It's I'm a middle of the ground type of person. That's the reason why <laughs> I'm a bit weird, I guess. But I do believe in taking first priority is yourself and to your family. Take care of them, and then once you're once you've gotten that taken care of, then you can start taking care of other people. And the reason why I believe this, because if everyone took care of themselves, not in the sense that they're so selfish, but to be selfish to make sure that they don't become a part of the problem. And what I mean by that is because if you become so selfless, selfless, selfish, selfless, um, you could, I could see people out there becoming poor to the point that they cannot help other people anymore. So I want to make sure that people take care of themselves first so they don't become part of the problem and if everyone could do that if everyone all of a sudden becomes not part of the problem and they're all part of the solution then there'd be no problem but obviously not everyone can do that so the for the people that can take care of themselves first and foremost and not become part of the problem there's less problems in the world but that's not to say that you cannot help other people just make sure that you are taken care of first then take care of other people. There's a famous saying that if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of other people. Um, it, I forget what the exact quote is, but yeah. Um, if you have a drug problem, you cannot go talk to people with drug problems and tell them what the problem is whenever you have the problem yourself. <laughs> if you can't fix yourself, then you can't fix other people, especially with the same problem. So that's my reasoning why you take care of yourself first and then you can help other people. So. That's what Osho was saying. You're responsible for yourself, which I do agree. And I do agree with him that so long as you are able and capable of taking care of yourself and able to provide a little bit more support to other people, then please do. It must be widened. The so second aspect is be active, but act selflessly. And for you chaps, this is your <coughs> Maha Mantra, Seva, serving. Seeing and serving God in humanity. This is karma mark. Pure rest of pure karma mark. Why is it important? And why does it lead you to making spiritual progress? Let me tell you the secret. The moment you start operating just for your own, look, nothing wrong by looking after yourself. I'm not saying starve yourself and die or something. <laughs> you continue to look after your interests. Keep looking after your family's interests. Don't let them starve and the neighbors are going to come and feed them. You need to earn money to look after your, don't stop that. But slowly expand the people you feel one with. Expand your circle of people you feel close with. This is karma mark. Expand. Don't, don't think, go oh, reject your own family and, and, and you know, let... No. Okay. Look after them and then grow in stature. Try and take on more and more people as you call your own. Uh, there you go. That's that's it. <laughs> that, is, that is my thinking right there. Obviously, you know, you, you just don't accept anyone in a sense. Again, I'm, I'm here adding restrictions to my stuff. <laughs> like, that's it. But there's more. I mean, because you don't know. People, there are some crazy people out there who just want to do harm. You have to be careful. <laughs> so, obviously you want to help people, but you also have to be careful. Expand the sphere of influence. Why is it important? Why does it make you spiritual? 
The moment you stop living for yourself and start living for others, this is called selfless activity. You work for the betterment of others, not for yourself. The moment you start doing that, do you know what magic happens? This ego that is kind of blocking your own view regarding who you are, your majesty is being blocked by your ego, saying you are a little, 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 little nobody. When you start operating for the greater good, that part is washed away. Because you're never thinking about yourself. Your focus of attention, not me anymore, is focus, oh, what about this, what happened here? So your focus has been taken away from this small me, 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 small me, to the greater good. You see yourself reflected in others. That's why you can work for them. And when you begin to see yourself in others, this is called spirituality. You are now growing. You are becoming a real master. This is the path of karma. When you work, but work for the greater good, not, for your, not stopping for your own private, but expand. When you work for the greater good, you are now washing away this wrong notion you have regarding yourself. That I am just little this me, me and my, I am so intelligent, I am man, I am married. All that is washed away. You got no time for it. You got carried away by, for the greater good. And that makes you spiritually enlightened. This is the second pathway. Karma mark. It seems easy, it is not easy. Because right from birth, we are kind of strongly attached to this me, my body, my own requirement, my own desires, must fulfill them. You need to slowly break free from that. It's not easy. And one of the best combinations the Hindus have created is, they say, mix bhakti with karma. So that's a very nice thing I heard from one of the movements. I won't praise one particular movement. They say, your bhakti will not be recognized unless it's also matched by selfless activity. Mm. Otherwise, God say, oh no, even your bhakti is no good, no good for me. Have you done something for somebody else? Nice mixture of bhakti, bhakti and karma. It's a marvelous way. So I'm just showing you variation of different paths you can adopt to become spiritual. Using a super personality, building relationship with it, bhakti. Looking for God, not in heaven, but in humanity. And doing selfless activity for the greater good. That too will make you spiritual. And they are not going in different direction, by the way. They all meet up at the deeper level. Oh, geez. Okay. So yeah, that's actually... Um, <clears throat> so, uh, continuing from the joke that I had from there. I might have 9 out of 9 on that checklist now. <laughs> so, I, I, I didn't think I could follow maybe any of these paths in its completion or in its truest form, but maybe karma might seem very plausible for me. I mean, generally speaking, that's what I try, obviously, and what he said later on, I didn't realize, is the fact that he's, what he said there exactly is what I follow, you know. You have to make sure that you keep your you and your family well so that you can serve other people. You cannot serve other people if you cannot even serve yourself. You are, you're probably going to create more harm than good. So, nothing wrong with helping people to the best of your abilities if you can. Um, but yeah, Bhakti Yoga, then, then you can, uh, Bhakti Yoga is devoted to God, but if you see uh, God in people, then you devote yourself to the people through action and devotion. That's amazing, that's a really good combination. Honestly, I think I did think about that during Swami Sarvapriyananda's, um, whenever he was explaining the two things that combined very well. I forget what, what they were. I think he said Bhakti and Raja because you devote yourself to God and then you meditate. I believe he said those two work well together. But I was thinking along the lines of um, maybe Karma and Jnana. Because to understand, um, to have knowledge in something and then to use that understanding and knowledge in action to provide, you know, um, like a comfortable chair or a way to end world hunger or to um, create a medicine that can cure certain diseases, you know, and knowledge with action. I, th I thought he was going to do that because that's, again, the thing that I follow, you know, not knowledge, <laughs> knowledge that I have or in action. And the, I mean, I, honestly, all these things go well so t together. I'm trying to think if there's any bank or meditation in action. I mean, I don't know. That's that. That seems doesn't seem like it measures well. But I mean, obviously, you know, maybe too much action. You need to meditate on your on your actions. And, well, I, I have a feeling all of them really goes really well together. <laughs> no matter what combination you do, it's all good. All four of them is the best, probably. But obviously, we would would probably focus on. We probably lean more towards one or two of them, in greater than say. Uh, all of them together.
Anyways, that is my reaction. I hope to f actually find the other ones. I, I was looking a little bit and I didn't see the other ones. I definitely want to find them and I want to hear what uh, Lakani has to say about it. So anyway, that's my reaction to Bhagavad Gita. Can selfless action lead to God? Hindu Academy. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.